Good morning, everyone. It's a very special, beautiful day today. You can find in the bulletin a beautiful blue page. What does the blue signify? Our beautiful flag. And today we will be celebrating one more time, actually the third time this year, in different levels, the 200th anniversary celebration of Greek independence. I was asked and all the priests in the metropolis were asked by our beloved Metropolitan Methodius to make this year a year of celebration for the Greek independence. And we already celebrated on the Greek school level and you were present when we played the video upstairs for everyone. We also, thanks to Peter Turianis, went to the city hall privately in a very small group did the Trisagion at George Dilboy's statue and also raised the great Greek flag just to keep the tradition going although the city hall had very strict restrictions that we couldn't have too many people but it was videotaped and soon I will send that video to everyone to watch and pray for George and also be proud of their flag. Today I asked the Goyans to present something here in the church for the Greek independence and I have to say I'm really impressed with the beautiful speeches they have written. Anna is there, Poti and Peter and Polixeni. Four of our Goya members will come up here and present their speeches. Dear members and friends of our parish, March 25th is a national celebration for the people of Greece and those of Greek descent. On March 25th, 1821, Greece officially declared its independence and began the revolution. This would give the nation its freedom after 400 years of rule by the Ottomans. This year, we celebrate the bicentennial anniversary of this event. On this day, we also celebrate the Annunciation of the Most Holy Theotokos. On this day, we commemorate the announcement that was made by Archangel Gabriel to the Virgin Mary. The announcement that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, would become incarnate and enter the world through Mary's womb. We find the biblical story of the Feast of the Annunciation in the first chapter of the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 through 39. Mary, who was living in Nazareth, was spinning thread when Archangel Gabriel appeared to her. He said to her, Hail, O favored one, the Lord is with you. Gabriel told Mary that she was someone very special to God. She was perplexed, though. Mary had never seen an angel before and wondered what kind of greeting this was. The angel told Mary to not be afraid, and he continued to tell her that she had found favor with God. Gabriel announced to Mary, You will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary was unsure of what the angel had just told her. She was to be married to Joseph, but was not married yet. She asked him how this could happen, since she had no husband. Archangel Gabriel told her that the Holy Spirit will come upon her, and that the child to be born would be called Holy, the Son of God. This was not the only news that Archangel Gabriel delivered to Mary. He proceeded to tell her that her cousin, Elizabeth, who was old in age, conceived a son who would be John the Baptist. With God, nothing is impossible. Mary replied to the angel, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be according to your word. Mary trusted the angel and knew that God had special plans for her. After her response, the angel departed. The leader of the Filikieteria, Alexander Ypsilantis, chose the day of the start of the Greek Revolution against the Ottoman Empire. It was no coincidence that he chose the 25th of March, 1821. The date was chosen since it would be evangelizing the political liberation of the Hellenic nation. On March 25, 1821, the people of Greece took up a fight against the Ottoman Empire, which ruled Greece from 1453 to the revolution. During the revolution, the notion of freedom or death was the mantra. Fight for the freedom of Greece or die trying. Bishop Hermanos of Patras raised the nation's flag at Aya Lavras Monastery, encouraging the people to stand up against the Ottoman Empire, the oppressors. Early in the, early in the fight, the Greeks reclaimed their capital, Athens, in January 1822. Yet, there was still some inner conflict between the revolutionaries. 
Sadly, Athens and a majority of the Grecian islands were taken back by the Ottomans. The, revolu the revolution seemed to be failing when the powers of France, Great Britain, and Russia joined in the Greek cause. Europe was sympathetic towards the Greeks, thanks to the help of English poet Lord Byron, who brought attention to Greece. Ultimately, in 1829, with the allied powers of Greece, France, Great Britain, and Russia, the revolution succeeded. Greece became an independent nation with the Treaty of Andropel and with the London Protocol of February 1830. The revolution of Greece, the nation of Greece, has remained free. The first governor was John Cappadocius, who established orphanages, schools, and helped usher a new age of Greece. Cappadocius is still honored today on a Greek 20 cent euro coin. Today, to celebrate this triumphant feat, there are marvelous parades filled with people. These parades happen in Greece, Cyprus, the United States, and in other various countries. Theodoros Kolokotronis was born at Amavouni Messini on April 3, 1770. He was a leading figure of the Greek Revolution in 1821. His last name was originally Dignitis, as it's mentioned in his memoirs. He spent his childhood in Aronisina, Arcadia, where his mother, Zambio Kostakis, came from. His father, Kostadinos Kolokotronis, was part of the Olorphic Uprising and was killed along with his two brothers by the Turks in 1780. At the age of 15, Theodor Kolokotronis became an armor bearer against the thieves in the Leondari region. In 1790, at the age of 20, he married Catherine Karutsu, and together they had four children. Kolokotronis had another son, Panos Kolokotronis, whom he had with Margarita Velisari. In 1805, he took part in naval operations with the Russian fleet during the Russian-Turkish War. In January 1806, an order for his prosecution was issued. Eventually, he managed to escape by boat, leaving the area from the west of and both passing the Russian occupied Kitra. From 1810, he served in the Greek military forces and the English army in Latin, thus reaching the rank of major. In 1818, he was initiated to the Firkiateria and in January 1821 returned to Mani for preparation of the revolution. He was there in Kalamata on March 23, 1821, and the next day he went to Megalopolis with the Nikitara. On March 25th, there were in plains of Kitra or Megalopolis when the revolution was announced. Although he was practically illiterate, the others were to do the history of his people. He was, a he was a leader in many military operations, such as the victory of Valdezzi, the fall of Tripolitza, and the destruction of the Ramanis and the Tervenakia. During the civil war, he and his sons were arrested and imprisoned in Naflio, and in 1825, Kolokotronis was released. He was a fervent server of the Kapolitri's policy and led events for the enthronement of the Ottoman. In 1833, his disagreements with the Regency led him back to Akronafia prisons in Naflio under the charge of treason. So on May 25, 1834, along with Prakutas, who was sentenced to death. Theodorus Kolokotronis' most famous quote is, God has signed the freedom of Greece and will not take his signature back. In the end, Theodorus Kolokotronis lived in, As in Athens with his mistress, Margarita Verisaris, in his privately owned home in the corner of present day Kolokotronis in Lekka Street. He died on February 4, 1843, at the age of 73, from a stroke, having returned from feats at the palaces as a defender of the Ottoman. Lasterina Bubulino was a Greek hero known for her help in the Greek War of Independence in the 19th century. She was born in May 1771 in a prison in Constantinople where her father had been arrested for taking part in revolutionary actions against the Ottoman Empire. After her father died in prison, her mother, Paraskevo, returned to the island of Vida where they lived. Four years later, her mother remarried to Captain Dimitrios Lazaru Orlov and the family moved to the neighboring island of Spetsas. As a child, Bubulino was fascinated by the sea and would often listen to stories of sailing. And she grew up with people talking about the soon-to-come Greek revolution of Greeks against the Ottomans, who had taken over the country for almost four centuries. Bubulino got married twice, first to Dimitri Yanousas and then to Dimitri Bubulis, from whom she got her name Bubulina. Unfortunately, both her husbands, who were captains, were killed during pirate raids. Bubulino was left with a large fortune from her two husbands and seven children to support. She turned out to be a great businesswoman who soon, added, who soon managed to earn more money. She went to become a partner in several vessels and also with three of her own. One of her ships was the Agamemnon. It was a huge ship with 18 cannons and the biggest Greek ship used in the Greek War of Independence. Bubulino was rumored to soon become a, mega, a member of the secret organization known as Filikiateria, which was spreading the idea of a Greek revolution over the Ottomans. Bubulina used her fortune to make weapons and ships for her country. She also collected more men to fight against the enemies with her. On March 13, 1821, Bubulina raised the Greek flag on her ship, the Agamemnon, and started a naval blockade against the Turks. She fought until the port of Napoli and fell and became a part of the blockade in Monembasia and in Peloponnese. In the war, she lost her eldest son, Yanis Yanousis. During the attack on Tripoli, Bubulina stepped in and served a huge part of the female household of the Sultan. After the Turks were defeated, Bubulina remained in Napoli until General Theodor Skolokotronis was arrested. 
After this, Bubulina gave away her house in Nopion and returned to her island of Spezos. In 1825, Nascarina Bubulina was killed in an unexpected manner when a member of the Kutsis family shot at her. They had come to question her about her son, Yorgos Kenuzas, who had been eloped with their daughter. After death, Bubulina was the first woman to be awarded with the rank of admiral in the Russian Navy. Many Jews have been named after her in Greece today, a symbol of the respect that the people of Greece felt for her. To erase the part from the past is like erasing an equal part from the future, said Yorgos Sefeis, one of the most important Greek poets of the 20th century, century and a Nobel laureate. He tells us that it is important for our future to continue to reflect and learn from historical events, especially events like the fight of brave men and women that gave their lives for our independence in 1821. This year, 200 years after this pivotal event, we are called to think deeper about the meaning of 1821. And even though 200 years seems like a long time, if we stop and think about it, it is only half as long as the 400 years that Greeks were enslaved under the Ottoman Empire. Yet, for 400 years, Greeks were able to maintain their language, their culture, and their orthodox faith. And when the time was right, it was these elements that allowed them to come together and fight for liberty. We all know that for Greeks, the revolution allowed the formation of a nation. We were able to regain our identity and at the same time integrate with the rest of the free world. Things that we consider basic today were finally possible. For example, the existence of university education, something that is very much in the minds of all kids my age. This would not be possible in Greece without the revolution. Music and the arts flourished, and many famous Greek scholars were born. Today, the leading sporting event in the world are the Olympic Games. They are held every four years and cultivate the human spirit and promote world peace through sport. The modern Olympic Games were held in Greece for the first time after we gained our independence. The War of 1821 did much more than just help the Greeks. As we know, the Greek Revolution was inspired by both the American as well as the French revolutions. But unique for Greece was that it was the first small country that fought for independence. Many other smaller countries in the region were under the, were under the Ottoman rule. As the fight for Greek independence unfolded, these smaller countries became inspired by the Greeks and decided to fight for their own independence. As I think about the Greek Revolution, I'm trying to get into the heart of those heroes, known and unknown, and understand their bravery and courage. They wanted freedom, a basic human right, so it makes sense that one would want to fight for it. But many of these heroes knew that they would never live to enjoy the freedom for which they fought for. What can I learn? What should we continue to celebrate about those Greeks in its most elemental form? For me, it is the self-sacrifice that resulted in our liberty. In my everyday life, most of my time is spent on how to do my homework, how to be a better student, a better athlete, so I can be competitive. Self-sacrifice is not something I practice very often. 200 years later, I am reminded to find ways to offer myself to others, because perhaps self-sacrifice is what makes us really free. What makes us truly Christian and allows us to understand the lyrics of the Greek national anthem saying, Hail Liberty, arisen from the hell in the sacred bones. Now we will be singing the Greek national anthem, so if you know it, sing along. And join us. Join us, please. <laughs> We watched the movie The Cliffs of Freedom the other day with a, a parish council and I will invite one day soon all of us to watch together. It's a beautiful, beautiful movie. And that's where first time I came across to that expression that Peter called a mantra of the Greeks at that time, Eleftheria Ithanatos, 
freedom or death. I have only one word to say today after these presentations. With children like this, there's only a left area. May God bless Greece and our country.